boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Roth, a third grade teacher here at Fred Douglas, and I'm going to be reading pages 214 to 225 from our one book, one Fred, the one and only Ivan. Finally, Julia and George take the pictures to the ring where there's room to see them all. An hour passes as they try to assemble my puzzle. Ruby's awake now, and she and Bob and I watch. Ivan, Ruby says, is that a picture for me? Yes, I say proudly. Where am I supposed to be? That's a zoo, Ruby. See the walls and the grass and the people looking at you? Ruby squints. Who are all those other elephants? You haven't met them, I say, yet. It's a very nice zoo, Ruby says with an approving nod. Bob nudges me with his cool nose. It is indeed. In the ring, Julia pumps her fist in the air. Yes, she cries. I told you, Dad. There it is. H-O-M-E. Home. George gazes at the letters. He spins around to look at me. Maybe it's just a coincidence, Jules. You know, a once in a trillion kind of thing? Like that old saying about the chimp and the typewriter. Give him a long enough and he'll write a novel. I make a grumbling noise, as if a chimp could write a letter, let alone a book. Then how do you explain the rest of it, Julia demands. The picture of Ruby in the zoo. How do you know it's a zoo, George asks. See the circle on the gate? There's a red giraffe in it. George squints, tilts his head. Are you sure that's a giraffe? I was thinking more along the lines of a deformed cat. It's the logo for the zoo, Dad. It's on older signs. Explain that. George gives her a helpless smile. I can't. I can't begin to. I'm just saying there has to be a logical explanation. Look how big this is. Julia puts the last piece of Ruby's right ear into place. It's huge. It's definitely large, George agrees. Julia watches me. She chews on her thumbnail. I see the question in her eyes. She turns back to the paintings and stares at them, looking, truly looking. A slow smile dawns on Julia's face. Dad, she says, I have an idea, a big idea. Julia races around the edge of my painting, her arms spread wide, billboard big. I'm not following you. I think it is meant to be on a billboard. That's what Ivan wants. George crosses his arms over his chest. What Ivan wants, he repeats slowly. And you know this because you two have been chatting? Because I'm an artist and he's an artist. Uh-huh, says George. Julia claps her hands together. Come on, Dad, I'm begging you. George shakes his head. No, I'm not doing that. No, billboard. No way. I'll get the ladder, Julia says. You get the glue. I know it's dark out, but the billboard's lit. Mac, fire me, Jules. Julia considers. But think of the publicity, Dad. Everybody would know about Ruby. You want me to put up a sign that shows Ruby in a zoo with the word home on it in giant letters, George gestures towards my pictures. A sign, indensely, that just happens to have been made by a gorilla? Exactly. And you want me to do it without Max's permission, George asks? Exactly. No, George says, no way. Julia goes to the edge of the ring, careful not to step on any of my paintings. She picks up Mac's plastic. She walks back and hands it to her father. George runs a finger along the blade. She's just a baby, Dad. Don't you want to help her? But how would it help, Jules? Even if lots of people see Ivan's sign, it doesn't mean anybody, anything's going to change. I'm not exactly sure yet. Julia shakes her head. Maybe 
people will see the sign and they'll know this isn't where Ruby belongs. Maybe they'll want to help too. George sighs. He looks at Ruby. She waves her trunk. It's a matter of principle, Dad. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. L-E, George corrects. Dad, Julia says softly, what if Ruby ends up like Stella? George looks at me, at Ruby, at Julia. He drops the claw stick. The ladder, he says quietly, it is in the storage locker. The next morning, I watch Mac's car slam to a halt in the parking lot. He leaps out. He stares at the billboard. His jaw is open. He doesn't move for a long time. Mad human. A mad gorilla is loud, but a mad human can be loud too especially when he is throwing chairs and turning over tables and breaking the cotton candy machine. Phone call. Mac is kicking a trash can across the food court when the phone rings. He answer it, answers it red faced and sweating. What the? He demands, he glares at me. I don't know what you're, he starts to say, but then he stops to listen. Who? Julia, who, he asked. Oh, sure, George's kid? She's the one who called you? More talking. With the phone to his ear, Matt comes closer to my cage, eyeing me suspiciously. Yeah, yeah, he says. He paints, sure. We've been selling his art for quite a while now. There is another long pause. Yeah, absolutely, it was my idea. Matt nods. A sm smile starts at the corner of his mouth. Photos? No problem. You want to see him in action? Come on down, have a look. We're open 365 days a year. Can't miss us, we're right off I-95. Mac picks up the overturned trash can. Yeah, I think he'll be adding more pictures. It's a, you know, what do you call it? A work in progress. When the call is done, Mac shakes his head. Possible, he says. An hour later, a man with a camera comes to take my picture. He is from the local paper, the one Julia called. How about you take one of me with the elephant, Mac suggests. He drapes his arm around Ruby's back, grinning as the camera clicks. Perfect, the man says, perfect. Mac agrees.